Welcome to Speed Talk Live, which isn't really live, but is a poorly produced podcast featuring me and my big mouth rattling off, sometimes incoherently, about racing and sometimes featuring what we hope are interesting guests. I'm Greg Engel. Let's get this party started. Welcome, everybody, to Speed Talk Live. I'm Greg Engel. Welcome back. We have another episode for you. I'm here in Florida. I got my scotch. Braining and thundering and lightning outside here in Orlando. But that's okay. We're going to get through it. This week, we're going to talk Pocono. We're going to hear Kyle Larson and Joey Logano er utter some cuss words, talk beer with Michael Waltrip, and we're going to look forward to Richmond, and I'm going to introduce you to one of the important members of the staff at CupScene.com. So let's get started, shall we? Well, there was Denny Hamlin winning at Pocono yet again. It was the seventh Pocono win for Hamlin, which now makes him the all-time winningest driver there among active drivers. It was also the 50th win of his career. But not everybody was happy about it. The fans of Pocono let him know that, although I think they were a little more upset that the race ended under caution. I don't know. The booze cascading down from the Pocono race fans today. Denny Hamlin got his first win here. Win number 50 in his career here and win number 600 for Toyota. But the talk will be about the move with Kyle Larson and running him up on that restart. Denny, did he have a right to be mad at you? What both both guys wrecked themselves. Uh, there was the lane. Uh, he he missed the corner first, and evidently he didn't have his right side tires clean. And when he gassed up, he just kept going again. Um, you know, you, you have an you have an option in those positions to you know to either hold it wide open and hit the fence, or you know lift and, and race it out. But uh, you know those are choices they made. I, I didn't hit either one of them. Didn't touch them. On a monumental day for you, win number 50, what does it mean to do it, A, here, but B, with all the boos from the fans at one of your favorite places? I love it. I love it. Uh, they, they can boo my rock out here in a few years. <laughs> How improbable at times today, Denny, did this win, win seem to you? Well, I thought we had the best car, honestly. We had the best car. The strategy worked out well. Uh, Chris just kept getting me more towards the front. Um, just, you know, this Mavis tire, and brakes car was just really fast right from the get-go in practice and uh, just really happy that uh, finally winning these races that uh, we should win the rock he mentions all the winners here at pocono and all-time greats get a rock here just outside the garage area he'll probably have that someday now it's the all-time winner at pocono with seven but this is not a popular win with the fans here in pocono so who right? wasn't happy about the last few laps None other than Kyle Larson. Yeah, we saw that aggressive racing between the 11 of Denny Hamlin and you. Assess what happened. Was there somebody in the right and somebody in the wrong? Uh, well, first off, just uh, really proud of my team to even get us in position to race for a win. I mean, we got spun uh, early and, and car wasn't the same after that, but uh, they played the strategy really well to uh, get us up there. So just um, unfortunate, but... Uh, <laughs> I've been cost a lot of uh, good finishes um, by him throughout my career, and and I know he says I race a certain way, but I don't think I've ever had to apologize to him about anything. So, not that I'm sure he's going to say sorry after this, but uh, is what it is. So, um, whatever, just move on, uh, move on. Try to uh, go to uh, I don't even know where we're at next week, <laughs> Richmond, I think, and I guess we won there earlier this year. So, try and get a get a good run in but um, yeah thanks to the crowd here in Pennsylvania I got a lot of support here in PA so um, I always love coming here you and Denny are friends off the racetrack do you have an inclination to reach out to him or just kind of wait and see I know you said you don't think he'll apologize no I mean it is what it is like yeah we're friends <laughs> yes this makes things shitty and awkward but um, you know whatever you know he, he's always right all, all the all the buddies know Denny's always right, so I'm sure I'm sure he was in the right there as well. But uh, you know, it just it, it is what it is. I'm not going to let it you know, tarnish a friendship on track. But I am pissed. So um, and, I, and I feel like I should be pissed. But um, I'm sure tune into actions detrimental. He'll have a he'll have a long clip about it. Do you race him differently on track then? I think at this point I, I have to right. Like I like I said I've I've never had to apologize to him about anything anything I've done on the racetrack. I can count four or five times where he's had to reach out to me to be like, oh, man, sorry, I put you in a bad spot there or whatever. And 
So eventually, like he says, you know, you got to start raising people a certain way to get get the respect back. So, um, I mean, he pulled the same move on Ross last year, which Ross probably deserved it, right? With all the stuff that, that he's done to Denny in his in his uh, you know career. Um, again, I haven't done I haven't done that to Denny, so I don't I don't think I deserve to be you know run into before I ever got to the wall. So um, just just it is what it is. I, I'm gonna go race the sprint car on Tuesday night. I'm gonna forget about it here in a, in a few hours, and uh, yeah, that's that's the best medicine for a for a tough result. So look forward to getting the 57 sprint car on Tuesday at Grandview, and um, you move on to Richmond. A very frustrated Kyle Larson comes home in the 21st position. Something that probably didn't get as much attention as it should have is what happened earlier in the race when Joey Logano got loose coming off turn four, got involved in a little incident. Uh, he was okay, but he busted all four tires on his Ford, and they wanted to tow him back to the garage. Only problem with that is you can't really tow those race cars when there's all four tires down, and the guys wanting to tow him back to the garage weren't real sure about what to do with that. Uh, somebody caught a snippet of the audio from inside Joey Logano's car. Car. Now, you have to listen to it really hard, but if you listen, you can tell Joey's none too happy. Yeah, so Joey wasn't too happy with his Pocono uh, Sunday. So we'll move on. Anyway, this week, we uh, are looking forward to not only for Richmond, but this week I got a chance to talk to one of my favorite guys in the whole world, Michael Waltrip. Now, I know he's kind of a polarizing figure to some because, you know, uh, sometimes when he does his grid walk during Fox Sports, some people don't like that. But you know what? He's a cool guy. But what many people don't really realize, he's a smart guy. He has ran a race team. He's won the Daytona 500 twice. He's been around the sport for quite a long time. And anytime I can get the chance to talk to Michael Waltrip, it's a very, very good thing. So I got a chance to spend a few minutes with Michael this week. And here we are talking to Michael Waltrip about racing and beer. So we're talking to one of my favorite NASCAR people of all time ever. And I, I say that with all sincerity, Michael Waltrip. You have been around the sport for a long time, my friend. Your career started at the age of 12 when you called your older brother. Um, and yes, I read your book. You're a four-time <laughs> cup winner, 2001-2003, uh, uh, Daytona 500 champion. You won 11 Xfinity races. You won a truck race. You last raced in 2017, but you know your, your, your history goes back so much farther than that, really. Um and, and, and a lot deeper than just being a driver because you were the consummate journeyman driver. It seemed like, you know, you were, you were racing here and racing there. And then you had your team, which started at, at, as, as what they call the Bush series back in what, I think 1996 was it. Um, and that was, that was going strong into 2015. You were the first Toyota team. I don't think many people know that that when Toyota entered the sport in the cup series, um, Michael Waltrip racing was the first one to step up. And 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 field Toyotas in there, and you had that until 2015. I remember the old movie theater that you converted into a shop. Um, you used to have a lot of fun going there when we did the media tours, if you remember that. But yeah. you know, since then you're now on Fox. You're a fixture on Fox. You have the you know you're in the Cup Series part of the year. You're you're and then and then you're with the Truck Series the whole season with them. How do you balance? you know, working the races and doing all that you do and, and keep saying, uh, one word, beer, <laughs> beer helps. Uh, we, we've been really blessed and really fortunate to be able to do what I dreamed of doing as a 12 year old and, and, um, uh, doing it my whole life. We were, we're really blessed, uh, to win races and to make our race team from a startup Toyota team to, finishing second in the championship, you know, having a chance to win the championship with Clint Boyer, winning races with Rudiman, Truex Boyer, me 
winning for my team. Uh, those are great memories. And um, back in 96, it was crazy. But in 1996, uh, Bob Scanlon, a guy that uh, was with Speed TV, called me up and said, will you do a TV show every Monday and recap the race? We want to have you, Johnny Benson, Kenny Schrader on there. Alan Betts was hosting it. We want you guys to just sort of walk us through what happened on Sunday. So uh, that started my career with Fox because Speed became FS1, yeah. which is a Fox, obviously. And so I've been there ever since. And I'm really thankful that I have a job that keeps me connected to the garage area. You know, I, I like to go down and see what the drivers are doing, what they're thinking, what's going on in the world of racing. Um, and about a year ago or so, we we um, we opened uh, our tap room up in Bristol, Virginia. Now we have a brewery of Bristol and then the, the tap room here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, like one mile down the road. So uh, the beer business is going well and uh, the TV is great. I love all my colleagues at Fox and um, I'll be on TV talking about the trucks going around the track in Pocono and the next week Richmond and then it's on to our playoffs. So um, just just had a lot of fun, you know, been really uh, been really thankful for all the opportunities and, and being able to continue to, to be involved in the sport. Uh, through my TV job. And I want to talk about the beer, but uh, because who would, doesn't want to talk about beer, but I want to ask you, you, you were part of a group of drivers um, in the nineties and, and through the two thousands when you stopped, you, Tony Stewart, Bobby, Le, the, the Labonte brothers. I mean, heck Mark Martin, Kurt Busch, Kenseth Edwards, um, the Burtons, how out of today's drivers, cause you're still very well connected to the sport. Like you said, you're still in the garage. You're still talking to the drivers. Out of all the today's drivers, whether it's the Cup, the the the, the, the trucks, or Xfinity, who do you see as a, a, among that group, a, a group of drivers that that um, maybe not you and me, but uh, will hopefully be retired on an island somewhere drinking beer, but it's somebody that that fifteen twenty years from now, do, who do you think among the drivers um, that you that we'll see that will be talked about among that group, like yourself and the Burtons and and all those other drivers you raced with? Well, you, you, everybody you mentioned won more races than me. So thank you for including me in that. <laughs> the talented racers. Um, there's just so many names right now. And I'm, I'm really thankful that I do the trucks because, you know, basically uh, the ARCA, they show up at ARCA first. And right after that, they're in the trucks. And so <clears> I get to see talented young racers uh, start their career. And there's been a few of them, obviously Kyle Bush, but, uh, Eric Jones, Christopher Bell. There's been guys that show up and run their first race when they're 16 or 17 years old. And you're like, not only will they win truck races, they're going to win cup races. Yep. You know, you see that soon and you see the talent. And the first one that comes to mind right now, and there's, 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 you know, many Zane Smith, obviously the champion last year, but Corey Heim right now is doing things that are, you know, a little bit better than yeah. most have at his uh, level of experience. Yep. He's, he's one that'll be around for a long, long time as will Zane Smith. Um, obviously, Josh Berry jumping into Cup next year with uh, with Stuart Haas. He'll be somebody that it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see mm -hmm. how he develops or how he's able to to get in Cup. Uh, obviously, lately, Stuart Haas hasn't been as fast as they want to be, and so what what challenges will he face? Um, so the, 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 the legacy of Kyle Busch, uh, you mentioned Kurt, and the legacy of what he's accomplished and the races he's won. Um, how will that, what will we look back in 15 years from now and see and think about all the greatness that, that he has uh, accomplished and will Denny Hamlin win a championship? You now he's done it all. That's a question that everybody wants to ask him about. Um, will, will that happen for Denny? Cause he's obviously one of the, the best that's ever sat down in a NASCAR car, Yeah, but he, he hasn't accomplished that, you know, sort of like Mark Martin, the one thing that was missing in his career. So um, great storylines, whether it's uh, Xfinity, uh, the trucks or cup, just a whole lot of fun stuff to watch. And, you know, how does how does it all turn out? Um, just what was 15 years ago, 2005, eight or something? Something, something like that. Yeah. 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 It's hard uh, to count. And, you know, Kyle Busch was great then, and he's still great now. Uh, Denny Hamlin showed up on the scene and, and won in his rookie season, and he's still great now. So who are the guys that we'll be talking about in 15 years from now that uh, have that same type of career legacy? 
you know, it's somebody I was thinking of, and and it just may have slipped under your radar was today's pole sitter for tomorrow, which is Nick Sanchez. I, I've talked to that young man, and I would throw him in that group. I I, I agree with everything you said, um, but I think the the two things that I've seen change right is is the you know the drivers and the and and not necessarily you know the names change. But I think about the schedule, right? I mean, come on, we're racing in LA for God's sakes. We're racing on the streets of Chicago, seeing those differences. What what are the biggest differences that you've seen from the time you've raced until now? Uh, do you think, especially in the driver market? Uh, just just the new new racetracks. I think that's the biggest thing. Back when I first started, uh, the schedule had been about the same for yeah forever. And then when I started, we went, you know, we 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 started going to new tracks. NASCAR started building new tracks. We, we did, did different, um, different parts of the country that we'd never done before. And then that sort of stayed the same, you know, for probably the last 15, 20 years, it sort of stayed the same. And now we're seeing that, that change again with, uh, Marcus Smith putting the dirt on the Bristol track and going to Coda. And then you, you mentioned the Coliseum in, in Chicago. So I think, I think that's fun. You know, I was really, thankful i started cup my rookie year was 86 mm -hmm. and there was no you know there was no kansas there was no texas uh we we went to riverside and and then that that sort of went away and, uh we then then all of a sudden you know Watkins Glen came on the schedule in indianapolis motor speedway and just so many cool new tracks and that was energetic and it was fun to see it all through the growth to the 80s 90s and into those and then over the last 15 years or so, it, it really sort of stayed the same. And now we're seeing, again, uh, innovative minds like Ben Kennedy mm -hmm. um, Beth that I mentioned saying, OK, where, where can we go with this with this product that we have that we know is an awesome racing series? And we also know that it's a great can make a great event, mm -hmm. a few couple concerts around it and and all the fun that the, the big cities bring. Uh, where do we go next? And. You know, I think about how much fun the IndyCar and St. Peter's IndyCar race in St. Petersburg looked. <laughs> I texted Marcus the other day. I said, can we go to St. Petersburg? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so uh, who knows what's next? But it's a great time, I think, to be a NASCAR fan because of, uh, uh, I think, the interest abroad. You know, we, we saw Kimi Raikkonen run Austin and Sean Van Giesbergen winning in Chicago. There's a lot of people that want to come see what NASCAR is all about. I think that's just really a really fun time to be a part of the sport. Do you see these teams? I mean, you were a team owner and I know it was rough then. Do you think it's rougher now to, to try um, and, and start a NASCAR team? Or do you think that with the right backing and the right kind of, um, you know, right kind of base, do you, do you, do, could you see yourself or anybody wanting to start another team? First of all, let me add that. Our pretzel sticks are the best I've ever had. <laughs> I'm gonna have some. I'm telling you, man. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out of the way to to come there. I'm in Florida, but when I come up for this the October race, I can promise you, sir, I shall be there. Well, you get a pretzel stick and wash it down with a cold Bristol Sunshine Tangerine Ale. You're gonna be in a really good place in the world. Um, well, just look at the new organizations that have excelled lately track house and 2311 you know they obviously said this is a great time to come to nascar and they brought celebs with them michael jordan i know michael a little bit and he's a huge racing fan he loves nascar he grew up with it and so his his uh his ownership of 2311 isn't just some pr stunt it's yeah. real as is pitbull uh, i mean he and he and um that whole organization have just bonded and, and, and he's a big part of his, his new album's named track house. So yep. it's really cool to see celebs come in and, uh, and be a part of NASCAR. So there's, I mean, obviously the charter system means there's 36 of those. So there's going to be 36, uh, you know, that's the amount that would make the business model work. How do you acquire those who goes away? I'm I'm a NASCAR fan, and uh, I know a little bit about the business of the sport, and I'm really interested to see what happens next. <laughs> Every day, like who who's coming, who's going, how's this all <laughs> out? Um, but at the time, just the competition 
we talked we talked in the trucks today. I think Matt Craft or Matt Crafton, champion of the truck series, about that twenty second or third. Like that's how good our field is in the trucks, and you know just rinse and repeat with Xfinity and now with all the different winners and, and all the um, anticipation about who's going to make the playoffs in in Cup and who's going to be able to 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 reign as champion of twenty twenty three. I just feel like it's 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 so competitive that it's really hard. I said on TV today at Pocono, I think we could make Zane Smith and uh, Corey Heim our two championship favorites for the trucks. But, I mean, Ben Rhodes, he's there every year. He's going to be there. Kyle Majeski is on a roll. It's, it's, it just, it can, it continues to get more and more interesting and more and more difficult. You mentioned uh, Nick Sanchez and right beside him is Jake Garcia. Yeah. Oh, Jake out at vegas for the second race of the year and he's in the pit in the in the garage area and i said how you feeling buddy and he looked like he was 12 i mean he's, he's <laughs> yeah i'm old so he's he's really young and he's a little bit nervous i said good good you should be you're getting ready to go do something you've never done before at 180 miles an hour and um it's just really it's just really cool to see these kids uh get these chances and be able to to go out there and contend at this level that uh i think that's i think that's nick's fourth poll of the year obviously he's he yeah. nearly dominated texas early in the season uh he's a win waiting to happen yep. and jake has proven that he's getting ever close ever and ever much closer to being in that same category of just a win that's right around the corner you know you you, you talk about the team owners and i'm going to say this and then i want to move on i want to talk about this beer but when I talked to Pitbull the first couple of times, the, the, the energy and the enthusiasm, and, and I mean, it's genuine, has, it made me think, you know, I remember a team owner like that. Oh, yeah, it was Michael Waltrip <laughs> because you used to bring a lot of energy, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to, to downplay Mr. H. I'm not trying to downplay Mr. Penske, but there's, you know, that energy that you used to bring is missing. You know, we would go on the media tour, for example, we go to the old, the movie theater, we go to other, we go to other shops and they would give us food and whatever. We would come to your shop and, and you would set up a talk show and you'd have a couch up on stage and you were the host. And I mean, that kind of energy I think was missing from this sport. Um, and, and when I saw Pitbull and like I said, I got to talk to him a couple of times, that's the kind of energy he brings. But now you've taken that energy and and because and, we're going to talk beer, um, because who who doesn't like beer? When when I was first got the atten- got got the attention here, Keith Green, uh, my friend, called me and said, "Hey, you should check this out." And I'd heard about it. And this is not you're not some home brewer making this in your backyard. You really are all in on this. Tell me the motivation behind it. I mean, when did it start? And and to get to where it's at now, tell me the story of how you how how it started and where you're at now. Well, we've we've grown tremendously. It was nearly five years ago now. Out wow. in, uh, we're me and my uh, my two partners, Brian and Glenn, in the in the beer company. We were we were out there for the NASCAR races, and we were drinking uh, wine one day, and it was time to go play golf. And I said, "Let's get a bottle of Chardonnay to go to the golf course." And they're like, <laughs> "We got to drink beer. We're going golfing." I'm like, ah, yeah, I hear you. So I just don't really like. I don't know. I'm kind of tired of beer. You know, I grew up on Miller Lite. I drank Miller Lite my whole life and uh, just kind of kind of over it a little bit. And they said, well, there's some good craft beers. I said, I've never been a fancy, fancy beer guy. Right. Just not who I am. So they said, well, let's just make let's just make beer we like. Let's give it a try. And uh, we have a friend that's a brewmaster out in Arizona. And he assigned us this task. He said, go to Denver, Colorado and sample beers for two days. Get a pen and paper, write down notes, what you like, what you don't like, why you like it, what makes you happy about it. And there's great brew pubs and breweries in, in the Denver area. Just make that trip, make that commitment. So we scheduled it. I know you're thinking, yeah, a lot of hard work, Mike. You went to Denver to drink beer for three days. Uh, that's that's really challenging, but uh, it was so educational for me because mm-hmm. like I said, I don't know a whole lot about craft beer. But uh, we came home with uh, a bunch of ideas and 
went to our brewmaster and and we we partnered with him to make those beers and began distributing them in Arizona uh because that's where Brian and Glenn live uh fast forward 5 years later uh we came to we're in North Carolina now uh with with our new brew uh new tap room here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway it's beautiful it's you can see around behind me no nah, you can't i got that fade thing on <laughs> It's it's really a, I don't know how I turned that on by the way and I don't know how to turn it off so we're not going to worry about that. Well, right. I can promise you that I will have I will have pictures for social media when I come up to visit. So it's all going on here and um, our first uh, location on the East Coast was in Bristol, Virginia, uh, just down the road from the racetrack and that's where we brew uh, all of our uh, tap beers there in Bristol and uh, we've just partnered with uh, with a company called Bavana. To help us with our distribution and our our brewing process here in on the east coast uh, so that's exciting for our growth we're currently in six states we plan to double that by the end of the year uh, with the assistance of bavana and the tap rooms are are something that uh, we partnered with a gentleman named ken McAllister, and uh ken is a uh, franchise guru it's what he's done his whole life in fact he um uh, created salon suites where we built out the salons mm -hmm. for the hairdressers and then they come in and rent the chair and that was his baby and now his uh his tap rooms are his baby <laughs> and he to have uh wants to have a hundred of them in the next five years uh we are in our first one here in concord that i mentioned and looking for other locations in the southeast right now so um the thing that it starts with is great beer and and great atmosphere and friendly faces and just making people happy. And I think our beers, uh, I, I love our beers. I think we've done a nice job of capturing the, the, the flavor of a craft beer, but, but keeping them drinkable uh, somewhat like a Miller Lite always was to me. So we get a lot of good, uh, good reports on how much people enjoy the beer and that makes me happy. And um, I'm looking forward to fueling the growth and to fuel the growth. You have to have, cash obviously so yeah we we recently um started a campaign on start engines you can go to startengine.com and you can you can invest in michael walter brewing i saw uh, that and we're gonna we're gonna use that that capital in order to 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 grow our team put more feet on the ground get into more stores and tell people the story of michael walter brewing and where we come from and who we are so uh, startengine.com, just type in Michael Walter Brewing and, and you'll learn the details. But um, it's it's all about having a good time. And, and um, you know, it, it, it says on our door, uh, come for the food and drinks, but stay for the experience. And as a race car driver and an entertainer for all these years, I want to make sure that the experience that we have here at the tap room or any tap room that we open over the next five years, that's the theme. You know, people work hard for their money and we want them to be able to come out, spend it and walk away and say that was time well spent. You got sponsorship this weekend, too, don't you? And that's a first, right? You got sponsorship <laughs> on a truck at Pocono, yeah. right? Yeah, Stuart's my buddy, man. We have so much fun together. And uh, he put Mike Walter Brewing on his uh, on his B post. So we got, you know, we got a, we got a little sponsorship, but uh Stewart and his dirt racing buddies, you know, I don't know that we're probably going to go like this is going to cost us way more than that sticker did because I told him <laughs> we'd give them beer and <laughs> they like to drink beer after a dirt race. So uh, Stewart's birthday's coming up next week. I think it's Tuesday. He turns 40. So I had to have a little bit of fun with him on TV today and wish him a happy 40th birthday. And ask him if he was slowing down anytime soon. And he said, hell no. It's wide <laughs> open. He's, he's my kind of people. So that's kind of cool, though, that, that you know, fans of you, because you, you've obviously got a lot of fans, can invest in in one of your ventures. And, and I, I was really looking at it. And, I mean, it's it's like, it's only like, what, 250 bucks, And somebody can invest, which I think is fantastic. Um, well, and then you can follow along, too. Yeah, see exactly. And, and I want to see... Do you, do you think about, you know, you got it on B post today. I mean, we remember Bobby Allison and the Miller light car, right? You drank Miller light. You've had some, some sponsorship. Do, do, do you think you, you would ever expand the sponsorship? Yeah. On that? I'm, certainly. I'm, I've believed in sponsors my whole life. I wouldn't have gotten to do 
uh, what I did if, if it weren't for, for sponsors. And those sponsors used NASCAR and used me to, to grow their brands and, and sell more product. And so um, we're certainly interested in opportunities to be on race cars and, and racing trucks or dirt cars. Who cares what it is? Um, but, you know, when we started this deal, there was three of us and we had about five or six friends that liked our story and they invested in our company and that's, that got us rolling. And now we're five years down the road. We've had other people come in and invest in our, in our business and invest in what we're doing. And we thought it would be cool to open it up to the public so that other folks could see exactly how the business is growing and how things are working, have fun. Like I said, that's sort of a theme, but also hopefully make a nice return on their dollar one day. So you, you talked about the, you know, the growing the business, you're going to open franchises, things like that. And, and so obviously we've got that coming up. Um, I know I'm going to visit um, and, and, and I urge the fans, if you go to the Bristol night race, it's close by. If you go to Charlotte in October, it's close by. Um, I will have to go out of my way now to, to when I'm up there uh, for the October race but let me ask you this, because, you know, you're 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 60. I'm 61. We're not that old. We know that. Uh -huh. What's next for Michael Waltrip, do you think? Well, I would like to become a single digit handicap, but <laughs> I'm the worst avid golfer I ever met. Um, so I'm going to play more golf and um, hopefully do a few more years of TV. Everybody. Lord willing, and everything works out normal, and um, go around and say thank you to folks that invest in our beer company. Enjoy, enjoy that life, and um, you know I have a wonderful family. I have a couple of beautiful daughters. Yep. One of which have two little boys, and uh, it's just really cool to be able to see them jumping around in the swimming pool and enjoying life. And um, yeah, so I don't really. There's nothing major that's next it's just a, I, I i love my life i love what i get to do and um i hope to just continue doing it for a few more years you know it blows my mind because i remember when macy and i remember when the girls were were like babies man and now you're you, you talk about you know you've got grandkids and and all that that's that's fantastic i've always been a fan i'll continue to be a fan i'm not just saying the uh that i'm going to come to your to your tap room and not go i will i will go out of my way to come there i urge nascar fans if you are a nascar fan um especially if you're if you're a fan of of waltrip and and those days you need to take a chance take a take a trip uh when you're in charlotte in october or you're at bristol uh for the night race stop by um i'm looking forward to it michael i can't thank you enough my friend you keep up uh doing what you're doing i want you on tv for a long time um, I know we got the Fox deal and NBC and all that stuff's coming up, but I suspect that's going to be just fine for next year. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, on my TV and, and at the track for many years to come. So thank you, my friend. I appreciate your time. It's really cool to see a smiling face and look forward to uh, seeing you when you come over here to the, to the tap room. I'll buy you a beer. I'll be there, sir. So let's look forward to Richmond this weekend. It's the second race of the year at, the uh, short track Kyle Larson won there in April so he could pull it out again maybe and get his a revenge for his Pocono loss then again Kevin Harvick is the defending winner he won here last August uh, so that would be kind of a cool story I want Kevin to win another race before he retires for good at the end of this season somebody's going to be really busy this weekend though is AJ Allmendinger Dinger will be running the Xfinity race at Road America which the NASCAR Cup Series moved away from to go to Chicago. Don't get me started on that. Um, and he will be running the race at Richmond Sunday. So Derek Krause is going to be qualifying and uh, practicing his car on Saturday. A.J. Allmendinger will get into the car on Sunday after racing at Road America, which he really wants to do. Um, and he will start in the back. So we'll see how A.J. Allmendinger does uh, this weekend in both races and the, today actually he talked about what it's going to be like to ra run both those ra races and why he's doing yeah that. i mean this is something we've had planned for uh a while now and and obviously plans can change but um you know for me it's it really starts with matt colleague you know 
when you have the motto trophy hunting, you want to go, you want to go race for, for trophies. Road America is a place that I've always loved in my, in my career, whether it's been champ car or through the Xfinity series and cup series, uh, and just, you know, an opportunity to go run another race and, uh, have some fun. You know, I, obviously we all know my, my love for road course racing. So I'm um, going to really enjoy that and, and hopefully we can go win a race on Saturday and then we'll show up on Sunday and be ready for the cup race. I, I think uh, Derek Krause will probably practice and qualify my car. So he does a lot of uh, our sim work at Collard Racing. So even though he hasn't really been in the cup car, he has a lot of experience on the sim of, of trying to help develop our setups. And yeah, it's just, you know, something that between Matt, Chris and I, we all decided that we wanted to go do this. And, um, you know, I was going to be on board with whatever Matt and Chris wanted to do. And, you know, this is the direction they wanted to go. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to have a lot of fun with it, especially on Saturday. All right. Now let's talk Richmond and introducing one of my favorite people on the planet, the associate editor of CupScene.com. Mr. Owen Johnson. Hi, Owen. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. Hi, Greg. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Good to see you. Yeah, well, we are, we're always talking. We, we mainly text. Uh, Owen, will <laughs> he lives in Virginia, and he's been to a couple races for us. Uh, he was at Chicago. He was at Atlanta. You're going to be at Richmond this weekend. Um, I'm not going to be at Richmond because there was a night uh, long ago in Virginia Beach that, uh, well, let's just say I might or might not have a bench warrant. Uh, so I, I don't go in the state of Virginia any more than I have to. Oh, anyway, so so um, Owen will be on the ground for us this weekend. So you, but but something that's kind of cool, Owen. This will be the first time you're covering the second a second race at a track, right? Because the first time you yes. went to the Richmond race in April, and now you're going back. What's it like being able to go to back to a racetrack that you've been to before? Now as as a working journalist. Yeah, I think I definitely have a lot more experience. I, the first time I went, I was kind of figuring out what I could do, the areas I could go to. I remember talking to you and just trying to figure out what I was able to do, being surprised by the access I got. And so I think going into it, knowing what I've been able to do, I, I've got I've gotten to cover in Atlanta was especially big for me, just being able to see where where I can go all around the track. I'm excited to put that to use in Richmond. And I've been, since it's my home state, my home track, I've been many times, so I know the track very well. I'm excited to talk to some drivers, get the storylines for you. You know, something that's cool, we're starting to cover SRX. And um, yes. what, one of the many things I like about you is you will jump feet first. And so I said, hey, do you want to cover SRX? You have really embraced it. So you've got a preview coming out. I know you talked to uh, mm -hmm. Helio today. I talked to Elio. And, yeah, and Don Hawk. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. Don Hawk is, is a legendary figure in NASCAR and a great guy. Um, a lot of the uh, souvenir stuff you see um, really helped. He started. Um, back in the the 80s and 90s with Dale Earnhardt, the Dale Earnhardt Sr. So it's really cool. So we, we, we got the SRX coverage coming up. I'm looking forward to that um, and, and all yes. that. Before you take off to England, um, <laughs> <laughs> Owen is going to uh, go to law school. And I'm really proud of you and really happy for that. But while you're here, you. we're going to we're going to squeeze you like a sponge. So going into Richmond. Right. We've got what, five races after the, or four races after Richmond, including and five, including this one. Mm -hmm. What do you think are going to be your big storylines you're going to be looking at covering when when uh, when you get to Richmond this weekend? I think the big thing right now is just playoffs. Everyone's trying to get into the playoffs. Drivers who haven't gotten got a win yet are really looking to get that win or at least get the points. Drivers like Suarez last week at, at, at Pocono really didn't get the points they needed. So I think it's going to be a, a day to try to get lots of points. I'm looking right at the cut line. So drivers like Almondinger, Suarez, McDowell, and Wallace. I'm going to be talking to them about their position. At Atlanta, they told me that they weren't talk they weren't trying to get points. They were trying to race for the win. I think that attitude's probably going to have to change as the season dies down and the points become a little bit more important. I'm also going to look at Alex Bowman. Alex got a win in 2021 that was really important for him. I think he's going to be trying to get a win after being out of the car for three races earlier this season. So I think that's going to be a big storyline that I'm looking at. And the playoffs are going to be the big lens for all of it, I think. And now, now, who do you, I'm, I, I'll tell you who I, I like. I mean, anybody that wins uh, beyond like, you know, um, Larson or um, Bowman, or I mean, not Bowman, but uh, but uh, William Byron, somebody who's won a lot, even Truex. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I would love to see Harvick win in his last year uh, as a full-time mm -hmm. driver. And, and he's won there. I think uh, that would be a great story. I also think Chase Elliott with his uh, 
with all his troubles he's had. And some of it he's brought on, on himself, you know, the suspension and, <laughs> and breaking his leg and stuff, which I don't blame him for, but the suspension, you know. Um, yes. So I would like to see him win. Who do you, do you have a favorite going into Richmond? Who do you think, who do you think has the best shot at it? I've got my eye. I think definitely Harvick. I know you, I know you focus on a little bit, but I also think a big, a big one for me is Christopher Bell. He's not mm. shown some of the speed that he had earlier this season. I think Christopher Bell, J, Joe Gibbs racing definitely knows how to, how to get a winning car at Richmond. I think he's going to have a fast car. I think he needs, he knows he needs to turn around. And I think he saw he he had that speed at New Hampshire until he had that spin and all of those pit road issues. If the team can figure out pit road, I think he'll be fast. What's been the biggest, you know, when you're at a track, um, you like you said, you get the access. I have favorite spots around different tracks. Um, mm -hmm. For me at Richmond, it was uh, it was in between turn two and our turn, uh, you know, coming into turn one and two standing mm -hmm. out there. Um, and a lot of times we go up on the, we like to be in the press box and that's where you can kind of see everything. Have you started to find some of the favorite spots you like? Um, and especially at Richmond, a, a place that you're, that you're like to go back front to and watch the the practice and things. Yeah. I think Richmond, Richmond's really great because of the work they've done on the infield. There's a whole lot of access, not just for me, but for all the fans too, that I really like. I think Richmond's done a great job of that. So I think the entire infield, you really get unparalleled access, at least to the tracks that I've been to. I definitely, that spot in turn one and turn two, they've got tables up there. You can enjoy a nice dinner while you watch the race. They've done a great job. So I think that's a great spot. I also really like the pit the pit entry on down in turn turn four is a good spot to sit down there, but you get really good access at Richmond. That's right where the media center is. So it's a good, good access point. So, <laughs> but before that, before you get to Richmond this weekend, you've got the SRX series, yes. right? Which is 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 really you know it's the Thursday Night Thunder and of course you're not you're not you're not old enough to remember this but Thursday Night <laughs> Thunder on ESPN used to be a staple so uh, you know when you look at the SRX series what do you think some of the storylines are going into this week uh, I think they're worth they're going to be a Thunder Road is that where they're at this weekend or this they're week? going to the Motor Mile Motor, Motor Mile, Mile in Virginia see you know yes. yeah there you go <laughs> see I'll tell you what I know um, so <laughs> so 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 do you have a favorite going into that. Well, I was just talking to Elio, and then looking at the entry list there, it's a it's a stacked field. But there's, I think the big thing for me is just the fact that they have so many actual NASCAR drivers, current NASCAR drivers this year, when last year it kind of, the schedule's conflicted. Now it's Thursday, these actual NASCAR drivers can go in and race, two races a weekend. So you've got guys like Kyle Busch coming in. I would not, I, I, I'm expecting a good run from Kyle Busch. I think he knows a short track. I think in equal cars, he'll be strong. So Kyle Busch is kind of the guy I've got my eye on this weekend outside of Elio who's making his first start in the series. Well, I'll, te I'll tell you this. Uh, I'm looking forward to your SRX coverage. I'm looking forward to your SRX preview and the regular previews you do every week. I know those are big uh, fantasy racing fans. Come read those. You get an idea of who, who can help you in your fantasy racing. I don't do that fantasy racing junk, but um, <laughs> you know, I know there's some people out there that do that. So uh, Owen, you have done fantastic work for the site. I'm looking forward to the rest of your work. And we're going to squeeze you like a sponge until you head over to England uh, to, to start on your law career. But you'll be back here for the for the summers, right? I will. Okay, good. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to go into the races. Yeah, we're going to snatch you away from your parents when you come back. So, okay. oh, and I, I appreciate it, my friend. Have fun this weekend in in uh, at, at Richmond and, and covering the SRX and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Five weeks after this week until the playoffs begin, the field will be set at Daytona. I'll be there. That's my home track. And we've got a lot going on between now and then. A lot of storylines. Can Elliot, Chase Elliott make it in? Can have Kevin Harvick win a race? Of course, one of one of those two could have won that win this week at Richmond. Uh, we'll see about that. And then we got the Indy Road Course. Kamu Kobayashi will be there. Shane Van Gisbergen. Can he win again? And he'll be joined by his fellow supercar star, Brody Kostecki. So we got that to look forward to. Either way, we got five more races till the playoffs start. And then we got the playoffs themselves. The summer's going by quick. So let's get ready. Let's go racing. Have fun. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe. Email me. See me on the street. I don't care. We'll see you at a track sometime soon. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Speed Talk Live. For questions or just to tell us how bad our production is or to leave other feedback, leave us a comment below. 
For all the latest NASCAR news, visit www.cupscene.com. Until next time, peace out and let's go racing.